Hi, my name is Chris Thomas, publisher of In City Magazine, and I'm happy to come to you today. Um, there's a new epidemic in the U.S. and also across the globe, and it's called bullying. October is a month that many know for being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, Domestic Violence Month, and I think there are one or two other uh, very important awareness months. But did you also know that October is Bullying Prevention Month? And some of you who personally know me uh, know that I am a victim of bullying as well. And because of it, I'm a founding member of a program called Flying Solo and Sync, where uh, it's a mindset program where we help people, specifically entrepreneurs, the solopreneur, to rewire their minds, to, re to rewire their thinking, to think more positive, to have better attitudes about life uh, that will affect their lives, their family life, their business, spirituality, and on and on. And second uh, part of that is that we create these shirts with catchphrases. I'm wearing one now. And there are multiple different phrases. And the goal is to keep affirmations in front of people with them at all times. These positive affirmations. And proceeds of each shirt is donated to a young person, to young people who are victims of bullying to have a more positive mindset and to be more positive. With bullying being such an epidemic and the numbers are staggering i mean you're speaking about annually in the u.s alone upwards of 13 million young people lose their lives as a result of bullying and today i have a a, a woman very beautiful person inward and outward named tammy savage and uh you know, this is, is certainly, I'm so excited to have Tammy to sit down with me today because some years ago, and she's never really gotten over it, something tragic happened uh, into their, their family in regards to um, bullying. And thank you, Tammy, for sitting down with, with me today and um, sharing your story. Um, ultimately, this is uh, going to help other people. Um, and thank you for sharing your story you know, with me and allowing us to share it with the, the public as well. Um, Tammy, uh, well, Tammy, t tell us, instead of me mentioning it to the world, to, tell us exactly, you know, what, not exactly, but what happened the reason was bringing us here today about bullying and what you've had to endure? Um, well, in 2015, I lost my son. My son was 10. It would have been um, six days to his birthday. He would have been 11. Um, and he hung himself. At the age of 10, he committed suicide. And at the time when it happened, um, in which I thought that it was something that was just unbelievable that could never, ever, ever take place. Um, a detective walked up to me and told me that it's more common than you think. And it is. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, an, it's amazing how many kids, you know, although we don't know what they're dealing with, depression, um, people, you know, bullying them and talking about them and how things affect them. It happens and it's a very real problem today. And once, you know, once it happens, it's too late to go back and fix it. You know. Thank you, Tammy. Um, tell us about Sean Savage. He's a, he, was, he was a junior, right? Sean Savage uh, Jr. Tell us yeah, about him. Yeah, he was a junior. Um, he was an amazing child. He was bright. He was an honor student. Um, he was a gifted child. Uh, he was tested, had a very high IQ, was in the gifted program. 
Um, he loved life. He loved cars. He said that one day he was going to grow up and have his own line of cars. He loved making things. He was a little entrepreneur. Everything he did, he tried to see a business aspect of it. Um, he loved animals. He loved going fishing. Um, doing all types of stuff. Just watching him grow was amazing. And but I mean to cut you off. And speaking about uh, fishing, before we started filming, uh, you mentioned to me about what you you guys had moved uh, at at one point, and mm -hmm. they found a he creek. He found a creek behind the oh. house, and I didn't even know it was a creek back there. And they found a creek. In that creek, he found little crawdads and little fish, and he came and showed them to me. And he was like, Ma, Ma, I'm finna sell, I'm finna, I'm finna sell fish. <laughs> so it's like he wanted to go into business for himself. Um, even in school, he'd do things that were just so, so amazing. He always thought of some way to start his own little business thing and make money. Um, even in school, I got a call from the teacher one day. And the teacher told me they had him in the office. To my, he was in trouble for distribution. So I'm like, what in the world? And he used to always come up to me, have me buy mechanical pencils for him. He wanted the big pack. I buy him a pack of them, you know, get them ready for school. I noticed, like, before he getting ready for school, the night before, he's on the floor. He's taking all the lead out the pencils except for one and placing the, the lead neatly in his box. The next thing you know, you know, he goes to school, apparently. He's selling the pencils, but then he's selling it to the kids with one piece of lead. So they always had to come back and ask or, or buy more lead. For Supply, and demand, huh? Supply and demand. Supply and demand. So everything was like a business move for him. And I knew, you know, when he grew up, he was going to be somebody great. He was going to do some things. So, you know, that's just the... Uh, the hurting part of knowing what's been taken away, although he didn't realize who he was, you know. So, what what do you miss most about Sean? Um, I miss his smile. I miss his personality. I miss his touch. This that was my baby. That was my baby boy. Um, I miss every day was something new with that child, you know. Every day was was like an adventure with him because you never knew what he was gonna do. I mean, and every day it was, you know, it was a joy, and just to see and watch him grow was something amazing. And I just, I don't know. It's a lot. It's it's a lot. I thank you. I appreciate you. You know, taking some time. I know this is. A very very touchy subject and, and you know if you, we need to pause for a moment you know feel free to to do that um, why share this story now Tammy because I've I've been watching ever since I mean well before my child passed I didn't really pay too much attention I was just living life you know living life working paying bills taking care of the kids until this happened with my child I didn't realize you know how much children go through you know it, it brought everything to my attention it was signs that I should have seen that I should have caught that I should have paid attention to these children go through a lot of things um, that we don't know or we don't understand um, I've been seeing other children that have committed suicide. It's like looking at the kids now, they done lost a lot of hope. Like there's no hope in them, you know, and I wish I could reach out and grab every last one of them. I mean, because we're in a, a time now where these kids, it's like they've lost compassion, they've lost hope. They don't know in which direction to go, you know, and it's impossible to know what's on their little minds unless we sit down and we talk to them. Depression in kids is real. Um, the bullying is real. 
I mean, but us as parents, even teachers, you know, sometimes we tend to overlook things. We overlook things, you know, it's a busy world, you got work, you got bills, but these kids have issues too. And by the time something like this happens, it's too late to go back and fix it. And in order for it to be fixed and for things like this to be recognized, it's gonna take not just the parents, not just the teachers, it's gonna take a whole community sitting down with these kids. I mean, I, I don't know. It just, it breaks my heart every time I see where a child is taking their life. And I feel like, you know, there's a mother, there's a father out there going through what I went through when I lost mine. And I wouldn't want no other parent to go through it. Um, it's a moment where you feel like you could have done something. It was something you could have done to stop it. It was something you could have done to prevent it. But you know everything they say happens for a reason i know it's hard to believe it it's hard to get over it you know and and in actuality you know it's it's never a pain that you can get over because you're going to carry that pain every day um is to me you know you got to find positive ways of dealing with it um, like if you can reach out to other to other kids, you know, to prevent them from going down the same road, down the same path. Um, parents, if you know that your children talk about other kids, if you know that they're messing with other kids, please put your foot down and stop it. Because if you were in the shoes of a parent that lost a child or their child was going through this, you would not, you wouldn't feel the way you feel. You would not allow your child to do that. I mean, it's it's a hurtful situation. It's a hurtful cycle. I just, I don't know. So you're doing great. You're doing great. Thank you so much. Um, you, you want to take a sip of water? <laughs> this, um, your story is, is so moving. And I'm a big crybaby myself. I'm over here, you know, <laughs> making, drying my eyes and, and wanted to be a support factor to you. And um, I can't even begin to, you know, imagine. You know, I know I went through bullying, but, you know, I'm, I am here, you know. Uh, I didn't get any help. Uh, but, you know, who knows about, you know, why some people do certain things and, and tend to, you know, want to take their lives the way they think that's the only choice or solution uh, that and, they have. And that's another thing, because um, that's another thing that I think about. I know I'm a good mama. I know I love my kids. I know I love them and I treasure them more than anything in the world. But at the end of the day, what we say to our kids and what we show our kids, that's what really matters. Um, I wish that I would have told my child every day how amazing and how special he was. I wish I would have instilled that into him. Because you never know, like I said, what children deal with on a daily basis at school. If they're dealing with or suffering from depression, from anything that's going wrong at school, for them to come home and not hear, you're special, you know, you, you're amazing and get all the love and, and shower with love, it's going to make that even so much harder for them to deal with because they're going to feel like nobody's on their side. So it's very important, you know, for us to sit up there and talk to our kids, get to know what their day is like, get to know their friends, get to know what's going on in their minds, how their day was. Um, the old saying, children should be seen and not heard, is not true, especially not in these days. You never know what your children are being exposed to. They have the media, um, you got YouTube, Facebook, you got all these online sources where they can get all types of information, all types of ideas. I mean, you never know what they're being showed at school by their peers. Get in your child's head, sit down with them talk to them, make them feel like they're the most important thing in the world. I mean, you never know how bad things are for them at school or 
how bad it is with them dealing with it could even be just one person at school that they're dealing with that can make things feel so horrible for them and for them to come home and then not have an okay day at home it just blows everything overboard get to know your kids sit down talk to them love on them i wish the teachers would do the same thing um nowadays we have so many teachers at these schools that are there just for work just to be employed but it shouldn't be like that they should be out there because teaching should be their passion that they really care about needs they feel these kids so when they come across situations like this they notify somebody they get into that situation root themselves into it to fix it and help you know like i said it's going to be a whole community of effort to have to be put forth to fix this problem thank you so much i know you you touched on this uh, but if we can kind of reiterate you know again what is it important for parents you know to do um, at home as far as with their children to uh, make sure they stay abreast as far as what's going on in their kid their children's lives and, and what, what what do you suggest some important things to do um the important things are communication sit down and talk with your child show your child love just don't feel that love show that child because i mean children go off of actions just like we do just like we want to see actions to prove words kids want to see it too sit down talk to them show them that they're loved show them that they're important get into your child's mind talk to them about their day most kids like i mean and this is how mine were too they'll sit up there and they'll tell you well okay everything was okay today but they're not going to tell you everything you got to sit down and actually talk to them to find out what's going on with them um also like with the media and stuff i would i would recommend with facebook especially if you have little kids I'd say 17 and under. If you can watch what is being said to them on Facebook and on Messenger, um, if you could monitor that, I, I would I would truly do it because you would be amazed at how some of these conversations on Messenger go with these kids. <coughs> some kids don't openly bully kids. Some kids actually be on Messenger, you know, sitting up there saying, fly stuff you ugly this i mean little stuff i mean you'd be amazed at what goes on on messenger on facebook and these kids aren't telling you um if you could i cut out facebook i mean which i did that for my my daughter um after what happened to her brother you know i watched it and monitored it at first but it wasn't something useful for her right now um, but you really have to get into these kids' life and really have to get into their mind to see what's going on. A lot of kids well, won't really want to tell you that, you know, things are bothering them or this person is messing with me or this is what's, bo this is what's really hurting me. You have to sit down and talk to them and let them know that it's okay. You know, you can come to me. You should be your child's best friend nowadays yes you do you have to be your child's best friend i mean in order to know what what all is going on because like i said some kids keep things so hidden deep within and you don't even really know it's a problem until something like that happens and they're gone so i say take advantage of the time that you have with your children get to know their friends get to know what's going on with them in school get to know their teachers get to know everything you can every aspect of their life to make sure that everything's okay and shower them every day with love and letting them know that they're important thank you tammy you know you touched on something um very important you know I remember growing up looking at little shows like uh, The Little Rascals and, and everything else. And, you know, they would have this this guy who would kind of, you know, it, it wasn't right. Of course, the, the big guy who would bully on the little kid, um, push on him or maybe, you know, trip him up or pull the girl's ponytail. Um, you know, those things were bullying, you know, even though it was kind of playfully 
done. It wasn't intentional as far as the way they would portray it on those shows. It still was bullying. However, with the advancement of technology, as you mentioned, you know, now it's, the bullying has expanded not only from a pushing standpoint mm -hmm. or from a joking standpoint, but also, also for cyber bullying as well, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And with joking and teasing, you know, that's also being categorized as, as bullying. So you touched on all those great points. Thank you so much. And parents, you know, I'm a parent. You know, as well. Parents, uh, if you uh, have young people uh, have suffered with, uh, as a victim of bullying, it's, it's some we have a tendency to, to blame yourselves. But uh, Tammy is, is a great mother. She's a great person. And it was not her fault that all of this happened. And can you touch on that a little bit? I know that you blame yourself for a while and you mm -hmm. had to come to a realization that it was not your fault. You know, would you mm -hmm. like to speak on that briefly? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, when something like that happens, when you lose a child, it's devastating. No matter how a child passes, you're always going to look and say, what if I did this or what if I did that? And it makes it hurt so much more because a child takes their own life. It makes it hurt even worse because you're like, man, it's something I could have I could have caught. It's something I could have did if I did this. You know, this wouldn't have happened. If I could have done that, it wouldn't have happened. But one thing that you know this whole thing has has taught me and it's a painful lesson it's a painful lesson to learn you know everything happens for a reason um god has held me together you know that's the only way that i'm still here it was times that i wanted to give up um it was times that i just wanted to just throw in the towel and and be done and felt like it would be better and easier to be gone um, but my child's death would have meant nothing. So, you know, I tried to overcome, you know, what I've lost and the pain that I go through every day. If I can just try to reach out to help kids like him, you know, to turn his death into something positive where there's awareness about the situation going on with kids with depression, um, anger, bullying, um, and to try to help these kids. If I feel like I've saved at least one child, I feel like I've honored my child. And that's how I chose to spend the rest of my life um, and live every day for him. That's how I got over it. Um, and that's getting over the pain mildly because still every day is still it hurts um it's still hurtful um every year when it's time to enroll kids in school every birthday every holiday my birthday um you know mother's day my child he didn't have no money wasn't old enough to work when my child used to go and go outside he don't i it, i even got i've got like little tree leaves and and different things if he couldn't find flowers he'd always make me a card he always bring me something for mother's day and my birthday he even tried to cook me breakfast mm -hmm. one time <laughs> he scrambled eggs and grits but i mean it's things that you miss and you know i try to remember the happy memories instead of dwelling on the bad because that one night that that happened, that doesn't make my child. That's not who my child was. So, you know, I try to remember the, the good times. And I see him and so many other kids that I see out here. And it's like, like I said, a lot of them have lost hope. And what they really need is for people to reach out to them and show them, you know, hey, show them compassion, show them, you know, that there is hope. They can be anything they want to be. This, what they're going through right now is just for right now. Um, 
the bad days don't last always. So what they go through, it is always a better day. Because if I could have just grabbed my child before he did that and stopped him and just told him, you know, today is a bad day. You know, tomorrow is another day. It's a whole new possibility. Today won't matter to you a month from now, a year from now. You know, I mean, you would have been grown and looking back at this and been like, man, I can't believe I did that. But, you know, they're only in it for the moment. These kids are only thinking about this day. I mean, so it's it's hard it's a hard it's a hard thing to get over. I mean, you'll always love your child, but like I said, I chose to live my life and try to move towards ways of helping other kids that are in his position to prevent it from happening to another parent. Because I wouldn't want another parent to suffer and go through this cuz it 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 is devastating. Devastating. Thank you so much, uh, Tammy. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, you wanting to share, you know, your story with the world and to our listeners. That's it, you know, everyone. Um, there's so much more, and there are links that we're going to post, you know, actually in addition to this story, to this uh, this video about you know ways to help some things you can keep an eye on you know, as well for signs of your children uh, going through bullying and bullying not only affects the young person as for who's being bullied the victim but bullying also if affects the bully his or herself and then also the individual who is on looking and not saying anything you know about it so there are three categories of individuals that are affected from bullying as a result of bullying. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention to this increasingly rising epidemic of bullying. And if you're any signs of your child going through bullying or being a bully, please, please, there's help out there. There's free help out there in counseling that uh, your child can participate in because you know, we want to help. Thank you for your attention to this. Please share this with the world uh, because this is a story that and an awareness that needs to for everyone to hear. Thank you to our supporters of this video, of course, uh, in City Magazine, along with Flying Solo and Sync, Chef Lee, Fine Cuisines, along with Alamez uh, Harrison and Demetrius Curry. Thank you so much for the supporters, you know, of the what Im the impact that bullying has. So, thank you for your time. Until next time, have a great day.